Hello and welcome to K Stop Fuse's K pop podcast. It's been a while. But hello, once again, this is Jeff Benjamin, finally reunited with the, <laughs> I just have to say the Tina to my Jeff. It's Tina Zoo, everyone. Hey, did y'all miss me? She's back. I, I missed you. I am back. <laughs> Aw, I missed y'all so much. Um, yes. It was, um, was kind of tough keeping up with <laughs> music and releases during my vacation, but I tried. Yes. Um, mm-hmm. I, I, you know, listened to Brooks episode last mm, week and she yes. did such a good job she yes. was so cute she has so much to say <laughs> so um thank you brooke for filling in for me yes, and thank we you, need brooke. to get her on more episodes yes she killed it. She of did course such a great job. she did such a great job yeah. so thank you brooke for for joining us and, mm-hmm. and filling in for tina being a, a suitable replacement for Absolutely. for tina and she like had so much to say about <laughs> freaking hey beauty products. Yes. Oh my gosh. Yeah. We need a. We need a. Yeah. Section. That's like a whole nother like area it, that it really, we don't really dive into. Another so. area of K stop. Yeah. Maybe to we explore. should. We should like do a segment where we just have mm-hmm. Brooke like test products or something and then like do it live on the. <laughs> On the on the show or something. On the show, we'll be like, we swear she's putting on my she's moisturizer, putting it on and this is what's happening. And this is what's her face is bubbling. <laughs> um, yes. Yeah, hey, we have. I'm really happy to be back. We have yes. some new releases. Yes, yes, yes. We're happy to have you back, Tina. Um, yes, let's. Um, yes, sorry. It was a. It's a bit of a. You know, it was a vac- Almost a vacation period for K Stop in general. Um, so, yes, it's great to have you guys back. Great to be back in the swing of things. Mm-hmm. And as we always say, you guys are as much of this show as we are, and we love seeing your comments. We got quite a few comments actually this week. Yay. So I'm gonna Look go how through those. Popular Brooke is already. I no, Brooke was the just comments kill- are just flooding it. <laughs> they really, they really are. But um, shout out to Amy who is at Tuk to Jar Tuk, uh, which is T U K T U U J A A R T U Q, uh, Twitter, and she wrote hashtag K Stop missing Tina this week, Aww. but big hi to Brooke. Um, and she, we were talking. Brooke got into a little bit about um. Her uh, her love of BTS and specifically member Jin, Jin and Jin's um, shoulders. Jin, yes, I see you heard her hashtag. hashtag Jin's broad shoulders. <laughs> I think it was yes. And um, she, uh, Amy, wanted to mention that she loves Jin's always. Um, she's not being a she, although she's not a BTS fan. She doesn't know who he is. So um, she's gonna need to hit up Brooke for for more information on that. I'm sure she's more than willing to, <laughs> yes. to fill her in. To fill her in exactly. <laughs> yes, and she also you know she just said Awake is my favorite from the album. So I I squeed a little bit when I heard it mentioned. Jin has a lovely voice. So Amy, get on your Jin info. You can totally figure it out. Um, another thing. Did you see the the Triple H? video did you get a chance so I to scan through it mm-hmm. it's not what i expected i don't no. i didn't hate it i was just a little taken aback yeah um, i don't yeah. really have solid thoughts on it yet <laughs> well danielle van Buren does who is at <laughs> yeller van and she wrote hashtag case stop us on twitter she read an interview that said triple h's music videos about youth also read stats that korea's youth is unhappy suicide scene is mm-hmm. like addressing this right. and i thought oh wow that's a deep take on this Mm -hmm. and I was like dang I never you know I mean like it's an interesting take on that for sure and you know granted like the song seems pretty happy and you know like it's very there's a big juxtaposition between you know the message and sonically with the you know Mm -hmm. what it's giving you yeah and they, they, they did have the warnings right in the beginning of the video I think I think it says like yeah it's like a 19 plus video right, or right. something it's like, like that. With yeah. Elements of violence. <laughs> so. so, yeah, I don't know. I I I can't. Yeah, I mean that's definitely a deep take on it and yeah, I mean I could definitely see what they were going for. You know, I on one hand it doesn't seem like Hana and the Pentagon guys would like get into something like that, but right. I don't know, I see it. I understand what you're getting at. So, I'm going to need to sit with that comment a little longer. <laughs> and last but not least, we also have um, a mention from Vansity K-pop at Rachel, R-A-C-H-E-L underscore Gray, G-R-A-Y 31, hey girl, who, hey. who wrote, um, she is excited that BTS is ex- as attending the Billboard Music Awards. I only wish they would perform too. Um, and yeah, I don't know if you guys saw, but BTS not only nominated for a 
Billboard Music Award for Top Social Artists alongside Justin Bieber, Selena Gomez, mm-hmm. all my faves. Um, they are going to attend. And, you know, whether or not they perform or get an award on screen or um, or present an award, whatever it might be, you know, I kind of feel like this is already already like a good, it's a good step for them, you know? Like you gotta make the rounds, make the appearances. Um, Small steps. Yeah, if you wanna kind of be part of this world. And you know, this is exactly what all the bands trying to like break America do. You know, you go to appearances. I know it's obviously not easy for them from Korea (laughs) to be able to like, you know, just hit up any, you know, American event or award show they want. Especially one as I feel like prestigious as you know, a billboard event. Billboard is, you know, very esteemed um, in terms of, you know, Mm. music critics and, um, you know, it's seen as a reliable source for obtaining, you know, new music and quality music. So um, I think this is a really, really big moment for them. Yeah. So, and I think it's just, it's the right moment for them. You know, it'll be, you know, Psy had previously attended, um, but they'll be the first group, which is cool. Right. Um, I can't wait to see what they're going to wear. And yeah. I hope like, like is Kehlani and like Wale going to be there? Since Hopefully. They, I feel like if they're there, there'll, there'll <laughs> definitely be some great photo ops. Yeah. Supporting each other, at least on Twitter. And, exactly. They can finally yeah. like, you know, in person, you know, say hey Absolutely. and stuff like that. That'd be really cool. Actually, I didn't even think about that. Yeah, that would be awesome. And, you know, like just like, you know, like we were saying, you know, like they'll probably do some more promo while they're there, um, you know, do some stuff in the States. It's a good move overall, regardless of, you know, are they going to perform? Who knows? But um, is I think it's a good move regardless. So mm-hmm. I feel you in the sentiment of, yeah, like it would be awesome to see whatever kind of acts, you know, right. more international acts. You know, th- this Billboard Music Awards are pretty open to new artists. I remember like they gave the first live TV performance like five seconds of summer, if you remember that, like back in the oh, day. Right. They were like, that was a really big moment. I haven't heard in a minute. I know. What happened to Five Sauce? What did happen to Five Sauce? Maria Sherman, let us know. Yeah, please, if you're (laughs) listening, I'm sure you are. No, Day Six is the new Five Seconds of Summer. Oh, my God. According to this new song. No, I'm kidding. Oh, I know, right? A little little bit, maybe. (laughs) But yes, yes, yes. I don't know. Yeah, so all, I feel you. Thank you. I feel you in all the comments. Thank you guys so much, as always. And again, Jeff, when is the Billboard Music Awards? Oh, when are the Billboard? They are uh, May 21st. Mm -hmm. And don't forget, you can also vote for BTS because the Social Award, they earned it. It's interesting. They, you got nominated by earning it like on the their social chart the billboard right. social chart but to win but to win you actually it's all voting so it's oh. it's them Bieber, selena um sean mendez and maybe oh, demi think? lovato well, i already think they're gonna win in that case there's no way they're not gonna win <laughs> i don't want to jinx it i don't want to jinx it either Armies but are oh and ariana grande yeah and i think they're going they're going and you know the thing and, and you know i actually said this um do you remember when Girls' Generation was nominated for that YouTube award? Oh, right, yeah. And that was also fan and Tiffany voted. Tiffany accepted. Didn't she? They won yeah, the award, right? They she won. went up and accepted for them. Yeah, which was, I have mixed feelings about. It but was a little awkward. It, well, it was just, you know, it, it's unfortunate the whole group couldn't be there, yeah. you know, things like that. But, you know, I remember, and I actually did an interview with, with Wall Street Journal after this, and I, I and I spoke about how, you know, if you put K-pop on an even playing field, you know, and, and I know it's not as big as Justin Bieber or Demi Lovato or, or Ariana Grande, whatever it might be. But if you like put their fans up against like all the other global fans, like they will go hard. Oh, if yeah. you put on an even playing field, like look how far they can go. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I, I don't know what the numbers are like, but I don't know. I've, I've been seeing it all over Twitter. The BTS hashtag, uh, what is it? BTS BBMAs. Mm-hmm. That's how you vote for them. So, yeah. Show your support for BTS. Absolutely. We'll see. You know, I'll it'd be have to awesome. Do that myself. It'd be awesome if it gets televised. You know, if they win, that'd be so cool. Such a big moment. Yeah. But yeah. And speaking of, you know, hashtags and Twitter, you yes. can definitely hit us up. Hashtag yes. K Stop with comments, any feedback. Um, individually, I am at hey underscore Tina with three A's. And I am Jeff underscore underscore Benjamin with what I, with what with, <laughs> i was about to say with, with three one n's. n with, with, with one n with one n <laughs> spelled, spelled in the traditional normally. way 
two underscores though. <laughs> what is going on? Okay. <laughs> um, yes, and last but not least, wow, that's so many things to go through the day. Um, we, of course, ask you guys every week to ask you what your favorite release of the previous week was um and last week with brooke we voted or we chat we chatted about triple h's 365 fresh cards rumor and iu and g dragon's palette the card win the card won by a landslide they got 85 really? percent of the votes okay when i voted it was like iu was um tied with them at around like 40 something oh wow. well never mind well in the last minutes or whenever, <laughs> a game buzzer beater. Uh, and IU and G-Dragon ended up with 11%. And Triple H ended up with 5%. Or 4%. Um, so, yes, congratulations to, to Card, who continues Congrats, to do Card. well. And their their debut is coming. It's I'm very excited. But we got a great episode coming yes. forward. Um, yes, I say we just get right into it. So, Tina, who it. is first on our list? Let's talk about Jun Young from mm, Highlight, formerly Highlight. Beast. Yes. Um, I actually was very surprised, like pleasantly surprised that mm. he did another solo project. Um, this new project, well, the single is called Wonder If featuring Highs. Yeah. And we love Highs. We've mm -hmm. covered her a couple times. Um, <laughs> and I believe... Is the single itself also called Wonder If, or is it Love? I think it's um Too Much Love Kills Me, is oh. the title of the of the singles album. Oh really? Because that's the other song on there. I just I think that's the official like promo title. Oh, why did I think it was just this like one random? I one went, off? well like the two songs do sound very similar. Hmm. Um, so yeah, I guess I understand like that. <laughs> one of them had to be like the accompanying track and, mm -hmm. you know it wasn't like a dual release i see um so um this project mm -hmm. follows um i believe his first solo um project was called flower yeah flower and that was from a few years ago yeah like 2013 mm -hmm. yeah. and that one had like gina on there mm -hmm. um i had um fellow band may yo sub and oh, right. it, it had kind of like it was like kind of R and B, but tinged with ballad, with some like some. I don't know. How would you? It was a bit cafe. A little bit. Music. Yeah. That's what I remember it as. It wasn't. It definitely was a new side to Jun Young since mm -hmm. he's more known as you know the rapper, and he'll right. maybe sometimes do something more mellow, but usually do more do more rapping. But um, so this new release with highs, it gave me extreme. Dean vibes. Oh. He's going Dean yeah. for me, and I wasn't sure how I felt. Even everything from like his gestures and the way he's oh. like kind of like swaying and his like posture, um, and just like the whole aesthetic of the video really gave me Dean vibes. And it doesn't help that Highs and <laughs> Dean they've worked together a couple of times, right? Um, so I don't. I don't know if you've well, heard you know, that at all. You or? know what it actually, it reminded me a bit of, because I was listening to it, I was like, what does this sound like? And it reminded me initially of um, of Hotline Bling a bit, but actually more so, really? more so, um, you know, the Deja Vu song uh, Post Malone. by Post Malone and Justin Bieber yeah. that is essentially a Hotline Bling ripoff. Yeah. But um, it actually reminded me more of that. Like, I don't it's know. Like they are playing telephone. Kinda. Kind of. It kind of is. It was there were some like similar melodies and like I got that kind of I got that similar kind of like kind of sexy, mature kinda r and B. Yeah, yeah. Uh, electronic, you know. Blend that all together right. and, you know, make it this sort of like very modern, very right. like current sort of thing, um, which isn't a bad thing at all. But yeah, like it's um, it definitely felt like, OK, they were going for this thing. And and that right. is kind of what Dean goes for as well. Right. I think so, too. Like it so seemed like he had a very clear vision of yeah. what he wanted it to sound and look like. Right. Um. Yeah. Like that being said, it's not like it's a very it's it's not a new sound, but it's something that I think is trendy and mm. fans tend to like it more or less. Um, how do you think he, his vocals stacked up this time around? I mean, he did have a little bit of help with the, like, you know, the production, but right. I mean, I thought he, you know, you would never 
think that he's sort of like the rapper dude or whatever, you, you know, wouldn't like, think that, right? yeah. And I, I think he sounded really good. I, cause I was kind of, didn't really know what to expect or right. like, you know, it'd been so long since he last like did a solo thing and like I could, right. you know, I had to like remind myself what that was even like and then go into this and I'm like, okay, I see what you're doing. And I thought highs sounded really, really good on it in she particular. Did. And yeah, I just think, you know, it's like it, it, all of the worries I had for beast or highlight post mm-hmm. beast post cube world seem to be like very unfounded. Like every time yes, I think agreed. like, you know, I thought once again that like, you know, I was really nervous about that first album and things like that, but things were great. And like, mm-hmm. they're doing it independent and they're doing it like really well. And once again, like this also came out and like, you know, I was like, Oh, it's like, I don't know if there's as much hype or anticipation. Right. And then like in the end, it just yeah, sort of I feel like they're came just, together. Uh, I know we've said this about, you know, these group of guys a lot. Um, how they are always um, so consistent, right? And they release great music and um, keep you interested without mm. kind of being overly repetitive as yes. if they are just like a one-trick pony. Right. Um, and they've had a couple blips that we've covered before. <laughs> but overall... Specifically, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but yeah, like, um, it really is interesting seeing, like, Chun Hyung's, um, I guess, trajectory and like how mm. far he's come and how he's grown as an artist. Because in, you know, back when they were Beast, um, their songs were a little bit more kind of, um, uh, what's the word? A bit more, a bit more maybe outlined in terms of mm. this, this type of, this part of the song is for. Oh, him uh-huh, uh-huh. and like Jun Hyung is doing this rap part right. like everything's very kind of yeah you know um designated designated thank you <laughs> um whereas now he's um really bl- blending genres doing yes. different things um really kind of showing himself as like an artist yeah. rather than just a rapper um so yeah I think I I I like it the video I actually really liked the video, even though oh, really? it wasn't. It's like kind of like something I've seen before. That's what I I kind of felt personally. I was yeah. kind of like, meh. I was like, I you know we've seen the neon mm. smoky world, uh, like you know Vixen, right. uh, you know pining after it her. Reminded me a little bit just in terms of the lighting, um, like Mino's body, how it's very kind of. I think that's like, exa- yeah, exactly. You know, um, uh, and of course, there's always like the forlorn payphone scene. <laughs> where, um, you know, it's very, he's very kind of um, somber, but yeah. um, longing for, for this girl that he had, you know, mm. a, has a very long history with, but he's still thinking about her. Right. Um, what kind of threw me off was in the beginning, he, there were Chinese characters in, in, that neon sign oh. that's that said literally i want to kill you oh god really and the songs but the songs that's not the message of the song so i was like <laughs> he, they have to know what that says because koreans some of them um maybe not the younger generation because they just learn hangul but the older generation they tend to be able to read mm, hanja mm-hmm. like the chinese characters yeah so i wonder if he just like did that because he thought that was uh, edgy oh, like, edgy or something i don't know but um yeah, like the song itself is about, you know, still still thinking about this person because you have such a long history and you know their habits. So um, you're just wondering, are you still the same? It's mm. been so long. And then here you have a sign that says, I want to kill you. So I'm <laughs> like, okay. is this like some Freudian, like, oh, you know, slip or something or a more aggressive version of one? A Freudian slip. Oh, my gosh. That's but, funny. Um, or maybe... <laughs> Yeah, or like maybe he's talking about the memory. Who knows? You know, maybe it's some way. Maybe that's what's further. Deep down. Yeah. Because actually, I don't know if you've listened to the the second song on the project. I um, uh, I'm like blanking right. Oh, too much love kills me or yeah. can kill me. That song ex- explicitly oh. says you're not a good girl. Um, I you know I I wish mm. I wish bad things on you. So maybe that is. You know, alluding to that song, how that's like 
how he truly feels despite yeah. how he still longs for Maybe her. a part two is coming. Maybe. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I will say I wish he actually did some rapping because that's All what right. I like. I like mm-hmm. how his voice sounds when he raps. Yeah, so. there could have been like a cool thing like on the bridge with him, you know, him yeah, going to the rap and highs. He could have done something in the bridge. <laughs> Maybe something kind of G-Dragon-esque where G-Dragon yeah. kind of, he like <laughs> sings a little, but he still always has the rap in right. there. And it's very distinctly G-Dragon. Yeah. Hmm. So. What uh, I haven't listened to the other song. Does he rap on the other song? No, the other uh, one sounds very similar to this oh, one, to be okay, honest. Okay, uh, okay. It's maybe just not. The hook isn't as catchy. It's just mm. a little bit more um, slow and, mm. you know. I'll probably like it, though. I'm going to have to mellow. check it out. I liked it, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. No, I mean, overall, I just thought, like, yeah, it's like. It's once again good. And it, they kind of like surprise, like announce this. Like there wasn't like a big lead up or anything. And so I'm happy that, yeah, like, I don't know. Highlight just tends to, they're doing well. They're coming to New York next month, which That's is exciting right. for KCON. Yeah. And, and which know. means he's definitely going to perform like that song, right? I Hopefully. Like. I mean, yeah. Are they not allowed to perform B songs? No, anyone can perform a but cover. No, like, I mean, the new song. Oh, Which yes, Young, yes, yes. Like, since he has the opportunity. He yeah. as well. so. so we'll see. Yeah. Yeah. Ultimately. Highs looked great, though. I, I feel like we didn't talk enough about her, but she looked stunning. Oh, yeah. She looked and, great. I thought she sounded and really, I love really her, good. I love her voice. The, yeah. the quality of her of her voice, the tone. It came in, and it came in so well. It was like a, it like, the song was going well for me, but then, like, that came in. It was just, like, it another really highlight. Smooth. Yes. Yeah. I thought how she did you, really well. So how do you like her with Chun Hyung compared to with, like, <laughs> Dean? I mean, well, with here, she felt more of, like, a feature, like, a specific feature with, I feel like with her and Dean, it more feels like a collaboration. Right. Like they work, I agree. they tend to, I feel like they're more teamwork. They're like a unit. Yeah, yeah. kind of. But um, yeah, no, I definitely, I definitely see what you're saying with the Dean, not only sound, but like look like mm-hmm. kind of like, you know, those profile shots where like profile he has that shot. huge totally coat. Yeah. <laughs> that coat was very distracting by the way. It's kind of like but leaning a little. Yes. You know? I was like, hmm, yeah, I definitely yeah. see what you're saying. So. That's such a like formula. Mm-hmm. I saw that. I'm like, Yes. I love like, it. <laughs> Here we are. We know what's coming. I know. <laughs> Where are the neon signs? There they are. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but this, you know, this is just prepping us for for more Dean too. I need just more mm. of this. Yeah. There hasn't been a lot of good kind of, you know. You're right. Where's alt R and B? Where have they been? Where have they yeah. been? Hopefully, they're about to come with us soon. Come yeah. on, come on, Not boys that summer is and like girls. Necessarily a great season for that, but hey. <laughs> okay, we'll take it. We all need that one laid back vibe, exactly. Bop. <laughs> Once it's evening, hey. I'm ready. Once it's it's true. Once it's <laughs> evening. So let us know if you're when you'll be bopping this and what you guys think of Jun Young and Highland in general and Dean and Highs and all the great people we yes. love. <laughs> Who's next on the list? Um, um, let's switch it up to some some females. <laughs> okay. Lovelies. Lovelies. Who did not impress me at all when we had, uh, if you remember, uh, former Fuse editor uh, Jason Lipschitz. Uh, yes, that was the last time we talked about them, right? Yeah. Destiny, I think Destiny. it was. Destiny. And Destiny. Jason and I were both like, no. <laughs> right. <laughs> and I think I was okay with it. Yeah. <laughs> um, but. So they're back. They're back with Now We. <laughs> Now, which comma is we. now, comma we. Interesting. Which is, um, yeah, this is actually we didn't actually talk about. Um, I think it was a very busy week that week, but it's actually the repackaged singer, the lead singer from the repackage album, from the album of the same name. But um, yeah, I don't know. I'll, I'll go right into it and say that, like, I still, I I like this song. I kind of get what they're going for. They they've sort of seemingly found their place as like the synthy dreamy synth pop girl group uh the music is very dreamy always it's kind of has this uh but still catchy and bubble yeah. gummy and things like still that pretty bubbly bubbly yeah but i just don't know what is not totally clicking with this group like i listen to it and i'm like okay like yeah, you're you're hitting me over the head with the hook and the synths and the dreaminess and all these things, right. but I just don't. And 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 well, I'll I'll get into some more thoughts a little bit too. But what were your initial thoughts, or what do you feel? Um, 
to reaction. I honestly can't decipher, you know, the difference between this and the other things I've listened to from them. <sighs> and it's I have just, some thoughts on it's that. It's all very one note to me. And I think K-pop is something that's constantly pushing boundaries. Like, mm. yeah, K-pop likes kind of perky, happy songs, but it right. can't just be off a template yeah. i think fans are not that dumb and we you know we can really easily pick out artists that just don't stand out right and i feel like for someone who has released a few projects already um you know they're i'm just very unimpressed by kind of the lack of imagination and yeah. it's just everything just felt very cookie cutter to me their mm. expressions their you know the even just like the production the video the whole yeah s- the the pastel the yeah. the, the, f- the color filter yeah um mm. you know it just we i feel like we covered like quite a few girl group pop songs that are very similar right and like if you're gonna like for girl groups like why would i listen to this song when Pris- Pristin, pristine how do you Kristen, say that? Kristen, Kristen, I think. And like, like that single, I liked it. And granted, their, you know, their look is very different. But when I'm just a casual girl group follower, mm-hmm. yeah, I'm not gonna listen to Lovelies when there's other things that that sound better. Well, and you know, I was like kind of curious. I was like, yeah, wow, this is like very similar to like yeah what we were saying you know to the past stuff too and i was looking it up i was kind of curious to see and they've more or less gone with the same producer for every single and i'm like at this point like you got i think that they've been around since 2014 i think that's when they debuted and it's like that's a long time yeah actually, uh, for 2014 it was 2014 or 2015 but yeah i was just like at this point they they have to switch it up or risk yeah just kind of Why would why would you use the same producer? I just think, yeah, for I'm just every single thing at this point. Yeah, it's it's just a little, and I think, you know, you at, clearly are not, you know, <sighs> topping the charts with well, your first right, releases, right? And that's the thing is that, like you were just exactly saying, K-pop is about experimenting. It's about doing something different, you know, trying new things, um, you know, keeping things fresh, and you know, um, that song that we talked about last time, Destiny, it actually mm-hmm. became their first top ten single. Oh. Which is interesting. But then, um, you know, the follow-up single did not go top 10. I don't know if this one is. It's kind of like you you can't expect the same result, different results, though, if you're doing the same thing over and over. You know, you might have caught a lucky break once or twice. But, you know. Did you like that? You liked it. You thought Destiny was okay. Oh, it was okay. It had definitely hasn't I mean, was, stayed at the top of my playlist. I actually okay. like their last single, Wow, which okay. was the original album's right. lead track. But once again, it just felt a little disjointed. Not, It didn't feel like a, a true, like, a yeah. cohesive, like, thought. I'm just wondering why Destiny hit top 10 it just seems very arbitrary to me yeah it might have just maybe it was just a, 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 a good week <laughs> a timing but issue, yeah. i don't think they've like won on any music programs yet you know like that you know it's a long time to kind of you know have a group like this and you know what isn't clicking with them you know they're all really pretty they're all like you know they seem to have great coordinated choreography um i did I, yeah I I thought it was interesting that in the music video half the choreography is like done on their knees. I was oh, like, yeah. I will they're say, poor like, knees. There were moments that I liked, like I I really liked the electric blue paired with um, mm. the pastel yellow, and like they put yeah. a lot of focus on the yellow. There were like yellow chairs. They were, yeah. you know, skipping on the chairs. Like there were cool moments that I liked, um, but you know, I in terms of just how it was shot, it was very kind of traditional to me just like the up close face shots and they're all like looking innocent and yeah i've just seen that so many times like we're just like until the very end they finally touch the guy's hand or they finally hug him and i'm like okay i knew how this was gonna end by the time you started and the song is like I actually think the chorus is okay. It's fine. I like the chorus. It's yeah, it it reminds me a, a lot of their stuff reminds me of like very J-pop stuff. I it don't is know, a, yeah. you know, like that very kind of like kind 80s, of, yeah. and it's you know even just the look is kind yeah. of yeah, you know, 
kind of anime cutesy influence. maybe that's what it is so. yeah yeah i don't know they're, they're like lovely looking girl literally lovely looking lovely. girls like so cute so pretty i just yeah i just don't know what's clicking with them and i wonder if it is like kind of this musical have you listened to the rest stand- of the album because it's like a full album yeah i listen well there's this one really cool song uh it's called aya which is like it's cool. Like, I almost kind of wish, like, this is the kind of route they went. It has, like, a very, like, 8-bit vintage video game sound oh. to it. And, like, yeah, there's some cool stuff with them. Like, you know, kind of – so they're, same, they're from the same company as Infinite, you know? Right, So, right. like, Infinite so – They were the first girl group in right, w- under Wulim, yeah. Wulin, yeah. yeah. And they were, like – um, and I thought they were kind of – could kind of be like the also 80s synthesizer you know like because that's sort of like infinite's thing but they just kind of got this like sort of confused middling like sound with them and, and i'm kind of like you guys could go with this like it could be your thing but i don't know what's uh what's not really like clicking with them right. so I, I hope it happens for them but i just don't know if this is the They're one the- are they the second major artist on that label after Infinite? I think um, Infinite had a, uh, they had Nell, who were pretty right. popular, and then um, I actually didn't know Ju signed with them. Oh, Ju used to be JYP, and I love her. She was one of JYP's like star. Um, oh really? Solo artist, and she uh, was always linked to JYP. Oh. But then, according to you know the interwebs, <laughs> she is part of WM now. Or Wulim, not Wulim, WM. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, I, I think they're like the same thing. WM is like a separate one, right? WM is B1A4 and Oh My Girl. Oh, and, yeah. Um, my bad. Yeah. They both starts with W. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and they also had like a duo, I think. I can't remember their name right now. Okay. But yeah, it's basically like, yeah, they're kind of like the big group there. So... I don't know. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm rooting for them, but I just don't know what's clicking with it. Right. So, I get what they're going for. It's just like not. Yeah. happening musically which i think right. is ultimate you need a good song to break out and yeah like even do. now i already forgot what it sounds like <laughs> that's how it's Jeff, that could be anything oh well there we go <laughs> that's our answer <laughs> that's why it's not working oh so is there something we're not miss? we're missing with lovelies what do you guys think of it is it not clicking is there a song from lovelies that you think um, <laughs> show depicts them in a more positive light. Yeah, I mean they had that Let Achoo song that was so catchy, but like I, don't even, I barely plus remember they're that. All like really strange title names that don't make sense. <laughs> I know like, now I, we uh, Achoo like why Achoo, right? Uh, wow. Yeah. I guess Destiny is the outlier. Is, yeah, maybe that people are like I get this. That's okay. why. Yeah. All right. But um yeah, that's lovelies for you. And last but not least though, we have day six. Our monthly day six discussion. Our monthly day six discussion, basically. I'm glad I didn't miss this. Yeah, me too. For for my vacation. Yeah, so. technically, yeah, you, you might have, but it worked out in the it end. Out. Here we are, here they are with, with June oh it's not June, it's May. Um <laughs> with May's release of Dance Dance. Dance not Dance. the Fall Out Boy song. Oh my gosh. Dance, dance. 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 Oh. <laughs> well, Tina, I'm just going to let you take take off with this one because okay. I feel like you have thoughts. Um, So I think with their last release, um, what's the name of it? Where they were on the beach? Um, Wonder If or... No, that's if. a Junior song. Oh gosh. Wait, wow. I literally... J- it was called If though, right? Hold on, I totally. Oh yeah, maybe. It was definitely called. Um, so what they were was on the beach it? And they were very, very. I'm happy. serious. I'm sorry. Serious. I knew there was a capital I. Right. Um. So I remember being kind of torn about Happy Day Six because you know yes. me, I'm very into the forlorn kind of heartbroken right. Day Six. I think I was too. Yeah. But I liked it. But um, and then but. And I liked I'm Serious. I thought it was fun. But in terms of going that route and going toward the um, more, you know, fun, you know, kind of just chilling, partying kind of vibe. Yeah. I like this one a lot. Yeah. This song made me just really happy. Ah. Um, It helped. And then when I, you know, read the lyrics, it it definitely, like, worked even more for me. Um. I really, really liked how it was just encouraging you to just like not give a fuck and mm-hmm. just like 
yeah dance go hard have a great time and i think that really embodies soul nightlife and uh, it just really brought me back to when i visited a few, like i think like five years ago when i visited mm. and um i just had such an amazing time um exploring soul both by day and by night but especially by night and um you know their whole mentality there at you know when they're partying is just have a great time <laughs> if you miss the train that the last one's at like what 11 30 fuck it just keep drinking till 5 a.m when the next train runs like it's casual it's All fine right, right. like they just want to have a good time yeah and i think this song really embodies that and um it just like was also a good song to listen to you know opening like kicking off the week where you're like mm. a little stressed out and I'm <laughs> catching up on emails after a vacation. Um, <laughs> and then listening to it really kind of um, kind of just made me let go of all that for a little yeah, bit. Yeah, of course. So um, I love that. Yeah, and it just like made me want to be like, oh, yeah, like the weekend's going to be here any day now. Any day, you know? yes. <laughs> exactly. No, I mean, I thought this was like them almost like having their like pop punk moments you know yeah. which like a lot of that they really let loose with yeah this one. which like you know a lot of that stuff is about like you're just saying like letting loose you know having a go you know just kind of you know letting whatever kind of issues let or your worries you know melt away, melt away. yes you know, or and just or just even just don't think about them just for one night one yes. night or one day or whatever exactly so um yeah i um I, I like really liked that kind of feeling that they're that vibe that I was getting from them. And, you know, they really kind of even took that sound, you know, there were some like dub elements in it too, which like yeah. you kind of hear a lot in like the pop punk world and things like that too. So I was really a fan of just kind of what they were going for, like musically conceptually. Right. And I thought like, yeah, that was like a success in and of it its was own. Very drum heavy. Yeah. And so exactly. Do Wound got more shine. I right. thought he showed more personality. Yeah. Oh, 100%. Yeah. Because before I was like, I can't really remember what he looks like because oh, he's just no. always in the background. Drumming, drumming yeah. away. And, um, you know, granted, um, since this isn't as much like vocal heavy in terms mm -hmm. of, you know, singing, yeah. um, Sungjin. Well, there were some moments though there where were they some, were like, yeah. But, you know, definitely Sungjin, um, we didn't hear as much from him. And like, I heard Wong Peel, you know, in some parts, but I thought Young K really stole the show. Yes, at least I was in the about video. to. Oh, yeah. He looks like he would be so much fun to party with. <laughs> no, I 100% agree. That, that I was just going to say, like, in the video, too, they're just kind of like letting themselves go loose right. and like having like fun, you know, while playing, obviously. It's a very right. minimal video right. for mostly, for the most part. But yeah, they're just like kind of like going hard with their instruments, doing what they love to do. It and just almost seems like a practice session like a yeah. rehearsal session but then they mm. in between they would like take breaks and like goof right. around right 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 exactly i mean you saw um jay like really kind of like just yeah. be a weirdo and like do all these like weird right. dance moves right. and like jay things like, like that such a freaking goofball I love yeah that. no like, he, he and young k together are hilarious oh yeah no i mean even yeah when we met them at a at kcon last year oh, it was very clear that's exactly well, how I they are like jay was like cracking jokes yeah and, and like trying to make like they were all like making like uh, like just being weirdos yeah. and like they just seem like they genuinely enjoy each other's company and like I think both so. inside and outside of the studio they are you know they support each other and have fun and it's yeah. like a brotherhood. Uh, no, that's and it's that's refreshing to see, yeah. you know, because like sometimes you can kind of, you it's know, not force what they say. Yeah, I mean, that's what's always you know. Uh, you know resonated with fans yeah no i 100 percent agree and you know they they i think they're really trying to you know embrace and like have a good time with this you know monthly mm -hmm. release thing you know and hope i i don't i don't know why i have this like dread of like what's gonna happen when like the 12 months are over granted we're only on month five Wait, but why am i releasing didn't they? S I saw something online saying that they're releasing an album in June. Are they? Is that is like a halfway like, point like album? A total lie. I don't oh, know. I have not seen anything like that. Okay. Maybe hmm. I just made that up. Maybe you did, Tina. <laughs> Maybe you're just wishful <laughs> Maybe thinking. Maybe I just want that album to come. Well, <laughs> yeah, but no, I thought, I thought, yeah, 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 like, um, I don't know. It's just like it's just a fun release, and like it's once again like another side of them, and we were kind of like wondering about the 
you know, fun side of day six. And, you know, here they are going even wilder and more fun. It's a good look for them. I don't know. I'm kind of like, I I see them even like, I feel like, oh my gosh. So like, this makes me want to see them live, like even more, you know, and like things like that. Right. I guess that makes sense. If you're going to see them in concert, you wouldn't want the whole set list to be, you right, are these, beautiful type yes. songs where you're like right. crying. All right. So they're really showing their versatility, you know, just like any K-pop group does except a certain one. And right. we, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> stupid joke. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, like, um, yeah, I just think like, you know, like this like feels like, you know, the part of like the concert where you'd start like really like going like yeah. wild or like it'd be the one that you open the show with and get for everyone sure, energetic. Sure. So, yeah, yeah, that's true. Um, I wonder how that because I was thinking maybe because, you know, it's creeping into the summer months mm. that they're going with, you know, the sound. Um I wonder if like the next three releases are also going to be like this. bangers. I want them to do like some like surf pop song, like some like really Ooh. like groovy, like West coasty, you know, oh, okay. something like that. I don't know. I think they could really do well with that. Some yeah. like, give me something like that. Maybe like, something just like chilling on a rooftop. kind of. Yes. Vibe. Yeah. That can be, yeah, that can be something July when it's really hot. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, you're like, I don't want to leave my house. Yes, exactly. Air conditioning. Exactly. So I don't know. I think once again, yeah, they're just bringing something exciting. I hope international fans are loving it and Korean fans. And, yeah. you know, I'm still waiting for one of these singles to kind of break out. Like yeah. the singles haven't really like I think they're performing them, but they're kind of like I was looking at the charts and like they've all kind of been charting like the 90s, which oh, isn't that great. But at least they're charting. Right. It's interesting because like IU does so well and she is very coffee shop kind yeah. of vibe and but um i guess she, her her coffee shop songs aren't necessarily <laughs> depressing but um whereas yeah. like day six is a little bit different um and, and obviously like she's famous. like right and she's also <laughs> just you know adored and you know yeah. and a, a cute girl i agree i do so, adore her but um yeah maybe the whole you know pop rock band crowd will embrace them more with this yeah maybe they want that um, we'll see because we were saying i i don't know we were saying how kind of last time like the i'm serious kind of sounded like a single that like cn blue or someone right. would put out this one i feel like is very different compared to anyone yeah. really out there in the k-pop scene so you think i'm curious I, i'm serious sounds like something that would do better on the charts like poppier yeah right. sounds more accessible than right. this one okay. that's how i feel what Agreed. about you yeah yeah i don't yeah. know if this is the one that's gonna break them out yeah i think if anything it's just kind of it's like a it's a statement you know single and yeah you it know. seems like so far you are beautiful is the most successful one right i heard that people hear those in in shops sometimes is that and was that the second single the first the third one, one where the third one the girl was watching her memories on the i on think the you're right yeah it seems like that one did well yeah it was one of the early ones that did yeah. the best so far yeah okay. so yeah well there we go all right day six we're rooting for you as yeah. always um what, what what is your what is your favorite release of the week though june young yeah yeah Ah, la, 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 la. I think I'll. I think I have to go with him too, as an overall pack. Just you know, thinking song wise, I think yeah, that probably is my favorite. Just in the end, okay. although I I haven't listened to that lovely song a lot. Oh lord, <laughs> I can't help it. Although I have to say, yeah, well, whatever. Yeah, um, that's that though. Be sure to vote on your favorite release of the week. Um, is it day six? Is it Lovelies or is it Chunya? Sorry, Ju Hyung. Ju right? Hyung. Yeah. Sorry, I'm struggling <laughs> no, with okay. the with the vowels and the consonants. Um, but yeah, so be sure to vote on our poll on Fuse TV. Um, we real quick got to get into the charts now, where we take a look at the top five Ooh. K-pop songs on US I have iTunes. No idea what's happening on the right charts. Now. I'm very yeah. intrigued. All right. Well, this is interesting. Coming at number five is Fire by BTS. These songs just literally do not leave. Like, BTS will never leave the charts, apparently. Um, Not when they're, you know, constantly doing big things like, oh, hey, they're going to be at, you know. Yeah, an award. Right. Maybe people are just checking them out. Yeah. Well, it's true. Um, Number four is Card 
Rumor. Okay. Did you get to listen to that one? I did, yeah. Um, did you like it? I actually like it the least out of the three. Yeah. Um, like they, they've been really strong though. So yeah. like, but I feel a, like I mean, that's the thing. It's not like I'm just saying relative. Yeah. It's, no, I think I would yeah. agree with that too. But. I think I actually. I know this sounds bad. Usually, you try to like gain momentum with the, <laughs> with each new single, but I like the first one the most, and the second the second most, and the third the least. I think that's how I am too. Like, oh no, no, it's such a jam. Like I'm not gonna turn it off if it right. comes on. No, it's of just course. Like, you know. No, it's great stuff. Um, number three, "Not Today" by BTS. That song you will not leave. Okay. Um, number two. Three six five fresh by Triple H. I need to listen to that. I can't give an accurate assessment. I can't. I can't remember if they were if they were number one last week or not. But um, (laughs) and number one is Dance Dance by Day Six. So they're getting the reaction. Oh my god, that's Mm. great. Is this your first time being number one on like the during like an episode? I don't know. Yeah, I feel like. No, I feel like they must have been at number one at least once before. <gasps> right on my pants. Oh my gosh, what is on your pants? What's on my pants? I'm no, just kidding. What the hell? Sorry, I'm wearing like black leggings. And <laughs> I was sitting cross-legged and now there's like <laughs> white shit on my pants. We're also recording this episode from, from the, the floor. floor. So we're just sitting here Ew. on the floor, hanging out in our studio. What the hell? Getting cozy. That's what I get for... Wearing black a lot. There's mm. always like something stuck to me. Always something stuck okay. to you, Tina. All right, I'm done freaking out. <laughs> All right, thank you. Well, yes, um, yes. Yeah, so let us know what's on your guys' charts as well. But before we end this episode, we of course got to get into our deep cut where we talk about a trending topic in the community and in the K-pop world or whatnot. And this week, we are going to talk about. Tiara. Tiara. My Tiara. favorite. I know. My favorite. Not favorite. Not favorite. Well, I thought this was an interesting topic because. And um, timely. Very timely because, yes, it's, um. well, it's interesting because Tiara's been around for quite a bit. Um, They've been doing, I think they were, they're coming in on like eight years together. Um, and basically like what was going to happen is that, you know, they were going to do one last comeback as a six member group. Um, you know, some members were ending their contracts, but, um, they, they had this, you know, they were planning to do at least one more com comeback, uh, with the six of them, but that didn't exactly come out as planned and Borum and so young members, Borum and so young, um, their contract is ending, um, like in May this month, like in the middle of this month, and this comeback was scheduled for June. So basically, they're they're not going to um, they're like they're not going to um, the comebacks kind of push back. The mm-hmm. four remaining members are going to do the comeback. Um, the member like Borum and Soyan aren't going to go to like the concerts that the group had scheduled before right. then, and like um. So there's kind of a lot going on here and, and a lot of fan and a lot of people are, are thinking that, you know, there's um, there's like a strong bond within this group and that the group has kind of like I don't know how much anyone's really looked into it, but I was looking at a couple reports and things like that. And I guess like the girls themselves have talked to like fan sites and been like, we want to stay together. We need to wait until the contracts end the label. Oh, I didn't know they could do that. Go tell that shit to fan sites. I think. Do they not? I'm sure they. With the management? I mean, I'm. I have a feeling that's why they're kind of ducking out soon because they're probably, you know, annoyed and like, you know, they're probably. It seems like f- here's kind of. So here's my take is that yeah. So I was kind of reading about like yeah, like they posted this photo and said like you know they they this one fan site for example posted this photo of like the six girls and they said do you believe tiara or do you believe you know their label mk mbke or something like that right. their same label is like dia and they're giving a lot of love to dia right now and they were like and like three of the members actually liked that photo and said like it you know which i think was you know, how did they find this random fan sites, you know, photo or whatnot, right. if they weren't specifically looking for right. like a message or something. Um, and yeah. And like, that's you know, petty as hell. it's so petty, no, I but like I love that's it. That's my impression of Tiara. I feel like there's a lot of petty shit happening. 
with yes. that group. Well, that's the thing is that this group has had a lot of ups and downs yeah. and some downs and you know but they've really you know it's really amazing that they've kind of stayed they persevered for yeah, sure I'll give them that they're so popular in China they have mm-hmm. this humongous fan they always win every poll basically right. if they're in a poll like their oh, gosh. final performance together as um, a group of six is actually in Taipei right I saw um, like they haven't performed there since their debut in Taipei oh really so I wonder how the turnout will be yeah no I mean it's it's gonna be yeah a moment for them and you know I I'll be really curious to kind of see, you know, I think it's going to be, you know, until like 2018, you know, if we see them return, uh, if they really do kind of all leave the label and kind of go to a different company together. But, you know, like, I don't know. I think it's just kind of interesting that like, you know, now the label is kind of coming out and saying things like it's unprofessional of them to not go to these schedules that they were set months in advance. And it's like, well, if you're out of the contract, you know, and you're, you're not going to make any money. They they, they didn't disclose what, what the, um, what the conflict, what the actual conflict was that right. happened because they said that they originally agreed to, despite um, the contract ending expiring like May 15th, that they were going to continue promoting for the comeback. And then they said they couldn't come up with an agreement, which means there had to have been financial issues involved. Yeah. Like they must, something must have happened where one side wanted them to, like do this promotion but then mm. like because it's not in the contract or their contracts expire that they would argue like we don't need to financially compensate you maybe yeah. or maybe they wanted you know some sort of additional you know benefits or compensation for All right for Working. being part of this comeback yeah. i don't know yeah um, no i mean yeah that it is i 100 percent agree there are some like things we obviously don't know right but, you know, it just seems like if a if your group was willing to kind of, you know, give you one last, you know, because I'm assuming you don't do a comeback unless it's financially viable and, you know, right. it's like oh, worth the, the yeah. money, you know, things like that. Poor after school, um, you know, you like <laughs> it's expensive group. Mm-hmm. Um, they, You know, like I, I would just assume that you would kind of like make and, you know, I don't. I don't really think they had like a crazy list of diva demands. Maybe they did. I don't know. But um, yeah, it just kind of seems like you would kind of do what was in your power to at least, you know, if fans knew that this was the last one, you know, you know, they're going to come out and support it. And now it almost feels like kind of like really lackluster. Like you got to push it back. You got to, you know, bring out four. You got to only do four members now, you know, like it's just not going to be the same at all. It really just feels like, I don't want to say what's left over. <laughs> it does kind of feel like leftovers. It's, yeah. it's like, I guess we'll just do this because we don't have any other option. And they obviously want to make one last cash grab and cash mm-hmm. in one last time with this group <laughs> because they know overseas they at least do really well. Right, exactly. Um, yeah. But I will say at least the four left over members uh-huh. who are continuing promoting they're the more popular ones more or less oh Un- I, Unjung, mm, Kyoming, right, right, right. Young, the who's the youngest and then how do you say her name Cree? Cree. I, I never knew I still don't know to this day I just day. like never said it out loud so I don't it think sounds I did even either. more ridiculous now that I say it out loud Cree. but um <laughs> but it sounds it seems like from fan discussion and comments that like the other two are maybe aren't super essential <laughs> that sounds terrible but it does um, i get heard people like kind of criticizing oh sonyeon doesn't seem like she really wants to be in the group oh, anymore interesting. like based on her behavior and like mm. you know j- you know body uh what's the uh, body language body language yeah <laughs> um but of course that's just what i read i yeah i don't follow the group so i don't know Right. Yeah, I don't know. And, you know, as much as like, you know, it sounds very hopeful and it sounds like, oh, if they like each other, they're all signed, you know, with another label next year or something like that. That is that's still tough to do. You know, it's tough to get like all six people on board. It's tough to, you know, get everyone to agree to the same things, you know, and things like that. And so here's my question. Why can't the other four members just like when do their contracts expire? Are they 
so far apart, the expiration dates, that they can't I think, just... Um, I think they actually re-upped it. I think that's the issue. The four Wait, of them... they re-upped it? The four of them re... Yeah, re-signed. For, like, what? Like, five years? No, I, th- I think when you get to be, like... When you've been in it for a while, you can do like year to year, I think. Oh. Because that's what that's well, what. Why I c- didn't they discuss that as six then? They say they wanted to be together as a group yeah. of six. So why did th- mm, that happen? That's interesting. That's a good point. Tina just found a crack in the in the theory. I don't know if I just like didn't read enough up on this, but no, it doesn't I've, seem. That well, doesn't that's make a good. No, that's actually great. I didn't even think of it like that. But yeah, I mean, you know, I heard. Um, I heard either. I heard one of them, maybe it was, I can't remember which one, but one of them was like promised or announced as to do a solo album. And then that seemingly got scrapped. So maybe there was some hmm. bad blood or maybe, I don't know. I mean, we obviously don't know what goes on behind the scenes and things like that, but I, I, I kind of, I don't know. I, I've sort of, I get the feeling that MBKE, you know, remember they, I, in my opinion, handled that scandal with Tiara, the bullying scandal, really awfully. And I just don't place a lot of trust in this group, to be honest, or in this, in, in, in this, the, in the label, oh, the I mean, the agency. Oh. Yeah. And I'm just kind of like, I don't know. I just feel like something, something must have got screwed up in like the discussions that like, it just ended up a little sad. I know. I don't know. Cause you, you keep saying that you, it seems like the group. <laughs> members like each other and that they have a bond i never got that impression i thought they just seem really petty and catty really i mean i just feel like i I don't know why i don't know why tr i feel like i have this like i don't it just seems like that they were kind of like you know i i see them kind of like as a lot of like um i see them as the result of like a lot of sexism in the industry because you know like there was like a lot of groups have had scandals but these women you know were really brought down for bullying you know supposed bullying and i thought it was like you know looking back on it like you know at the time i didn't know what to believe i was kind of like a new k-pop fan at the time i didn't really see how this was because tiara was up there with girls generation and 21 like they were really like you know they had number ones after number ones and they were doing really well and yeah their I, earlier I, stuff was it was really big a stuff bit better maybe i don't know <laughs> Tina is not not loving the Tiara discography, but yeah, it just seemed like I don't know. It, it just felt like there's been things like that very similarly seen with like you know boy group members or very similar scandals, worse scandals in my opinion with like boy bands or mm-hmm. or male acts, and they just did not get the hate that these of girls got. Not. Yeah, that's and, I think you know. And I kind of like always kind of like saw that. I, I was kind of like always kind of rooting for them in this kind. Of, maybe I should do like some big expose and be I think or like you that and like, like a <laughs> or like something like that. You know, just be like worth looking into. Yeah, or just so. And you know, I I feel like this group also they started they started with these six members. Remember, mm-hmm. then they added one, and they added another, and then they added we're gonna add a ninth but they never actually added a ninth and then they lost one and then they lost another and then they lost another and it was literally back to the original six it just seems like after all that you know and maybe it's it's not the case maybe but i would feel like after all that shit after all that stuff you went through you'd be like okay like it's all it's you guys or no one you know like i I just don't understand why and they could just be fed up with everything the agency would would agree to to go with f- four when that's like half the number that they had at one point. <laughs> right. I mean, maybe they already bought the track or maybe they like, well, you see, know. Well, see, here's another question. So if they're not going to promote with the other two, did are they re-recording the They're track? re-recording the album, yeah. That's why oh it got gosh, pushed so back. Oh, my gosh, so they're spending more money. Not uh-huh. that like it would cost a, like a lot more money to record it, but – uh, I mean, I'm sure they had, you know, all the, the layouts kind of planned out in terms yeah. of, you Choreography. know, Choreography. The formation and everything. Yeah. And, you know, I guess. No, exactly. I mean, it would, it would almost seem like given everything that now you have to push it back. Now you have to rethink everything. Mm-hmm. That would have been worth it. Like what happened in the discussions that just like really didn't, you know, and was it that they said, no, we're not going to pay you? I, I don't know. I mean, like to work out of a contract means you're ultimately working for free unless you discuss something else so you know what 
that's right. Happens. That's essentially what confused me because if the contract's ending but you're still promoting, then you're still you still need to be compensated in right. some way. So I'm assuming they just didn't reach an agreement on yeah. the compensation. And I'm sure they would have fed them and you know housed them because how else uh, you know how else they're oh, gonna I'm promote yeah. a six? But you know maybe it was just like the you know maybe they weren't gonna get the same you know album sales or something like that, oh, which right. I think is legitimate. I don't know. I mean it's really tough you know to, to for us to know exactly and maybe maybe we'll find out but kind of my as we kind of see a lot of groups kind of hit a lot of groups that were kind of like in this era of k-pop that we kind of know and love it just seems like why does why does everything need to be so messy <laughs> like i'm always yeah, like this is really messy I, it, and it tends to be you know or I, I don't know why we keep seeing it with the like, girl groups keep being handled so messily like 21s was not handled mm-hmm. in a good way in my opinion with minzy missing and things like that four minutes seem to be kind of this unfortunate matter where none of them want to talk to hana mm-hmm. um you know beast and highlight is kind of like the shining example of someone who you know turned out well yeah. but i don't know it's making me sad <laughs> yeah i don't poor tiara i know you don't yeah i yeah, know I'm i know so it's tough sad about this, this i don't know why but like i just like i like randomly it. started like listening to like a bunch of their tracks the other day and i was like wow they had some really good courses like so do you think that this group of four will do well do you think that cause sometimes uh, like trimming the fat's not a bad thing? <laughs> I, I I don't think so. I think it's I think it's going to kind of kind of like you're saying. I think people are going to kind of pick up that you know this is sort of like what was left over. This is sort of, it's just going to feel a little lame. I think you know ideally yeah, I think lame is actually really good. <sighs> you know I feel sad to say that, but you know like, like I, well that's sad. They're right? still doing one last go around. <sighs> hey, maybe the track will be awesome and everyone will love it. Right. I Maybe. don't know. Rolling my Curie very, very hopeful thinking. Kiri, Kiri, what She will be the star. <laughs> Kiri's time is coming. Yeah. Well. Yeah. I just kind of, you know, I, I just, I just feel like it's just kind of just this weird situation that feels like I feel like this only happens in K-pop, and it's like it's always just something weird with contracts and stuff like mm-hmm. that, and I don't know. I just maybe. Maybe the agency was like, hey, let's just split it all evenly between you girls. And maybe the four were like, no, but we're under contract. Oh, I don't know. I'm like totally making shit up. Interesting. I'm totally making shit up. I, I'm just saying I don't <laughs> – I wouldn't put it past the girls to to be mm. self-serving. Damn, Tina. Boys can be terrible too. Oh, this is not a girl-boy <laughs> thing. I like right. – you know. Um, okay. No, yeah. I mean it's true. Yeah, maybe it's very possible the f- the four of them could have betrayed them in a certain way. You know, like there's just kind of like a lot of a lot of things that we just don't know. So yeah, I don't know. I mean, I will say Super Junior was a little messy. If we want to go like the Oof. boys aren't always, you know, that was that is they don't you know Super messy. Junior was kind of messy. So is it is it not messy anymore? I don't I don't, I know. don't know what they're doing anymore. Um, <sighs> but yeah. I just remember Kibum was literally just acting all the time. Like, I don't, he like didn't do, he was like, was not part of the group. He was just off filming things. I'm like, you do realize you're like a singer, right? <laughs> like, I'm like, it was so confusing. Uh, I know, it's really tricky. Yeah. Maybe, I don't know, like, I was going to say maybe because they have so many members, but that's not really an excuse. I mean, 21 had four members, so. Yeah. Look at that. So I don't know. I, I just kind of hope, like, I don't want to. I don't want more of these like sad disbandment uh, news. Like, I really actually thought Tiara was like going to stick together, just because they did so well in like China and they seemed to get along and whatnot. I really thought they would just kind of keep chugging along, keep making right. tons of money for like in China, and that would right. be that. But maybe not. So we'll see. I don't know. Maybe I mean, this. If anything, they've piqued my interest a little bit. Hey. Come back. Well, there you go. Final yeah that tiamo song was was not the not yeah, the juice i i need a i need great. a little more so yes i'm hoping i'm just hoping for the best for you guys hoping the best for this generation of k-pop and hoping <laughs> the best for you my k-stop listeners yes. and that you'll share your comments and your thoughts with this episode and 
who your favorite comeback of the week was, what we should listen to, why it was your favorite comeback, et cetera, et cetera. Your so, favorite yeah. Tiara song. Your favorite Tiara song, Memories. Oh, you know what? Uh, real quick, real quick thing. They This was a little sad. They were going to film this reality show, the six of them, and it was going to be them camping for no- – three days, four nights or four nights, three days, oh, whatever, yeah, yeah, where yeah. they were going to go and like think about their memories of the last nine years or eight years or something. And I would have been like, that's what every K-pop group yeah. wants their favorite act to do. Like just literally talk about everything. Like, oh, like get nostalgic. Yeah. yeah. Oh my gosh. I want like One Direction to do that. I want Chris Aguilera to do that. I want, I want the Backstreet Boys to do that. I want and Sync to do that. I want everyone to do that. So and there's something about the campfire that just brings everyone together. It's so true. And it could be healing and bonding. It could have been. You know, something like that could have saved groups. <sighs> <laughs> so if they agreed to that, what happened? Anyway, I, I don't know. know. We should do, we should do that. We should we should get a campfire and go over the best case stop memories. Record an episode from the woods. In the woods, yes, exactly. <laughs> we'll d- invite you all to, um, <laughs> yeah, join us. But um, yes, okay, enough of this. All right. Anyway, <laughs> thank you guys as always for listening. Yes. Feel free to hit us up comments hashtag K Stop on Twitter, Views TV wherever. Um, yes, as always, this has been Jeff, and this is Tina. We'll see you next week. Thanks Bye. so much. Bye-bye. Bye bye.